So my name is Farah, Farah Shamma. Um, I am, I started off as a spoken word uh, poet. Um, I started writing in English and Arabic and then started writing in French. Um, and I slowly started feeling like I would like to get more into theater and branch out a bit. Um, so I studied um, performance and culture at Goldsmiths in London last year. And I am currently trying to see where writing can take me. Um, so from spoken word to perhaps um, theater, actually in a theater writing um, for a play or for a multi-disciplinary uh, uh, performance. So that's me. Um, okay, it's always a little strange to speak to um, a laptop without anyone being around. Um, oh, well, I don't know who's around. I'm gonna try to get comfortable and talk to you a little. So I'm currently in Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates. So Sharjah is um, around 10 minutes away from Dubai. Um, and it's by the sea, which is nice and very humid. Um, and yeah, I've been here since um, February. So right before the, the lockdown. And yeah, I've been on this chair for forever, um, <laughs> for four months. Okay. So I'm going to start with um, one of my oldest poems, my, my oldest written poems. My name is Farah, which is the Arabic word for happiness. Or shall I say, happiness. Please do call me Farah, even if you have some trouble with the H sound. Farah, like the wind rustling jasmine trees in Homs, like rubble in Haifa, Farah, guttural like pain, because in Arabic even happiness hurts, in Arabic happiness grazes the throat like huzun, sadness or hasad, envy. These letters play my vocal cords like an old wooden oud left to rust. These letters slowly burn like Ibn Rushd's writings into dust and I sit there watching them as they turn into smoke, as they rise into smoke. Shisha smoke. 20, 20th century Orientalism smoke. Golden harem smoke. Smoke that rises and falls like empires. I sit here watching them submerged in contradiction. And a voice in my head sings, Yalla na'ish fa'yoon al-layl wa'n'ool l-shams ta'ali ta'ali I apologize. This poem is in English. I didn't know you were beautiful. They didn't tell me I could write poetry or sing. They didn't tell me anything. They didn't tell me my tongue did not have to be an 8th century heroic battle. I apologize, this poem is in English, I didn't know you were beautiful. And when I say beautiful, I do not mean Orientalist fantasy. I do not mean Jahiliya poetry only read by scholars. I do not mean news channel Arabic. When I say beautiful, I mean this. ألف باء تاء ثاء جيم حاء خاء دال ذال راي زاي سين شين صاد ضاد طه ضه عين غين فاء قاف كاف لام ميم نون اكس واي زد صرخت بالضاد فصرخ الفؤاد ثمانا وعشرين صرخ فقل للغة اصبري ان ضاق الصدر ومن طلق اللسان فحبي يزداد وما كلم الله موسى في الوادي إلا حبا وإني لأضيف راء على الحب فأجعل من الحبر طوفان أبجدين وإني لأركب طاءك زورقا وأبحر فيه إلى الأبدية وأرى في عينك عين السلام صرخت بالضاد فصرخ الفؤاد ثمانا وعشرين صرخ فانقلب الحرف فرحا هي 
will talk more about this poem um, in a bit. Um, I will talk about it in a bit, and I wanted to start talking about it. That's what I do, quite talkative. Um, I usually, you know, um, distinguish between the poems that I write to speak publicly, um, to perform, to share with other people out loud on a stage, and the poems that I usually write in a more discreet manner before bed or when I'm overwhelmed with feelings or when I've had a bad day or when I've had a great day, you know what I mean. Um, and I would like to read you some of that too, right? Because it is a different medium for me. I do see them as different mediums and performance poetry can be a little, you know, loud and, and theatrical and not all of us you know it's not always relatable sometimes we want something a little more you know a little quieter a little calmer um so here's one um let me decide between one and the other um yeah 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 i like this one in an effort to change the image of the God in my head, I began reading children's books. You may say, it's a shame that you still struggle with an image of a God in the first place, with a capital G. But all these years of male-dominated worship have taken a toll on my imagination. It seems that my God is adamant about being a bearded man, some angelic sheikh who does discreet charity work. He is very kind, don't get me wrong, always surrounded by a white light that blurs his features with a capital H. When I speak to him, he often nods his head and lends me a helping hand. I thank him before going to bed. Recently, I've been trying to change God's gender to start with. He is slowly turning into a housewife in her late forties, cooking the world like a big dish. As a second step, I felt like changing her species, now a female sloth, who has taken her time to create the universe and who has been resting upside down ever since, or an incognito caterpillar who slowly metamorphoses into all my wishes and then flutters when hearing my prayers. You get my point. Hmm. And one day I was feeling, you know, miserable in London. Miserable. Um, it was rainy, it was gray. Um, and I just wrote this, I made a little um, <laughs> collage from the newspaper with things that, you know, reflect my mood. Um, and I was singing it as a song in my head. I've got the London blues. Too big to capture, too small to matter. Too many houses, too many trees, too many dreams that shatter. I've got the London blues, too many buildings, too many to-dos, too many ideas, too much chatter. I've got the London blues, too big to capture, too small to matter. Things like that. So this, you know, we don't always have to, I mean, I tell myself that, I don't always have to say something, big you know and it's difficult because when you the confusion i feel when i start sharing my work publicly um starts making me feel like i need to say something very important and i'm learning to share little moments during the day and writing things down on a little notebook really really helps me um okay um i'll do one more um, and then I'll talk a little more about how I started writing and what it means to me and what it means to be <laughs> sitting here talking to a screen, trying to remember that there are people um, that are hearing me. Uh, so this is a love poem comparing uh, my love to a country, uh, Lebanon. I don't know if you've been there, if you know a bit of it, um, but the city of Beirut can be a little crazy. And so, 
loving you is like Lebanon. Loving you is like Lebanon. It has the sea, the mountains, the cedars, religions, sects, Western East Beirut, Syrians, Palestinians, Haifa born Lebanese claimed Phoenicians, Lebanese speaking Egyptians, Happy New Age hippies in Chouane, and uptight, uptight shoppers in Solidaire, balconies overlooking Hamra, and old houses made into tobacco stores, garbage forgotten on streets, and drain attempting to cleanse the city. Yet failing the view from Beit Miri and the Menaish from Imjan's tiny kiosk, I love you, four million in me and 14 more outside. Okay, so um, I'll take a little break and I'll tell you more, um, talk to you more, have a conversation with you, and I'll be sharing some more uh, pieces throughout the conversation. So um, a couple of months ago, I, I had a couple of workshops with schools in Dubai, um, and um, the students and I had a wonderful time. Um, I spoke about you know my journey with writing, uh, the questions that I had, uh, when I first started writing, um, and we wanted to put together a, a performance, and like me and the students, uh, but then the lockdown happened, and um, so it was postponed. So I'm happy to be sharing these with you um, right now. Um, so the two questions you see in front of you, what is my relationship to my mother tongue or tongues, and do I feel more comfortable in English even if it's not my mother tongue? And if yes, why? So these are my personal questions. When I started writing um, in English, um, I started asking myself, Farah, why are you not writing in your mother tongue? Uh, my mother tongue is Arabic. Um, I'm from Palestine. Uh, so, and I learned uh, modern standard Arabic or classical Arabic in school, but I also speak um, um, Palestinian Levantine Arabic at home with my mom and, and my family. Um, and these questions uh, that you see in front of you were my two questions that helped me kickstart thinking about language, thinking about writing, um, and I slowly moved into bilingual writing, as you saw with the first piece I shared with you, um, Farah, uh, the one about my name and the one about my relationship to language. Um, because I felt like I was not given enough tools to write in Arabic. Arabic felt more like an academic language that I was only taught um, a couple of times a week in class. So I was also criticizing um, um, my school. Uh, I wrote this piece much younger. I was uh, 18, I think, when I wrote um, the Farah piece. And this is why I like to share this uh, peace with with myself and with people to remind myself that it was essential and I'm sure um, many of you um, might speak a language at home that you don't learn at school or sometimes even a dialect um, that you don't use at school um, and I think it's important when you become a writer if you decide if you feel like writing is your medium of expression um, to think about these things um, how do I feel about um, my my dialect? How do I feel about um, uh, Shakespearean English? If I study Shakespeare, how do I feel about uh, a foreign language I'm 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 learning, a second or third language? If I'm learning French or Spanish, uh, do I feel like I can express myself enough in these languages um, in writing? Even if I just put one word um, of I don't know, of Urdu, um, of Tagalog. Um, I can add different words um, from my language in an English text to share my story. So this was um, my starting point. I later started um, creating videos and sharing them on the internet. Um, so this is one of them. Uh, this video um, was really loved by people, was really shared. Um, 
it got a lot of views, uh, a lot of love, a lot of support, but also a lot of criticism. Um, and it was about the Arabic language, my relationship to the Arabic language in Arabic, uh, criticizing um, um, different things in the curriculum, different things in uh, what I learned at school and how I learned Arabic at school. Um, and then, um, so moving on from the world of YouTube, right? So when we start writing, I mean, probably uh, all of you students have Instagram accounts, uh, social media accounts in general. And if you feel like I'm a good writer, I feel comfortable enough to share and you start sharing your work on the internet, um, sometimes you may stay there, you may stay on the internet. That's what happened to me. I felt like I was stuck. Um, I was stuck in a screen um, constantly um, on YouTube. I kept looking at views and how people perceived my work at the comments and that really affected me. So I decided to take a step back and say, I need to use this platform to actually do work um, on theater, in, in the theater. Um, so I created a crowdfunding campaign. I wanted to show you the page. Um, hope you can see it if I get out of the PowerPoint. Um, here, look at that. Um, so when I got accepted to um, to study performance in London, I didn't get um, the money, the scholarship money. Um, so I created a, a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo um, and I called it the scholarship wreck, uh, which I really like. Um, <laughs> um, and I did use the internet. I did use my writing, uh, the support of audience to actually go study what I love, um, to go study performance and it worked. And I actually received the whole sum. Uh, some people donated uh, not on the website, um, not through the website. Um, so to me, what I'm trying to tell you is that I'm speaking to you as potential writers, potential performers, um, but also to those of you who do not like writing, who have other mediums to express themselves. Um, I'm, 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 I'm just saying that the internet is in our lives, um, it's our, it's becoming a big part of our lives. And I personally got stuck in the internet. I felt like I needed to step out of there. I needed to look at writing and my work, um, you know, with real life human interactions and not just uh, through videos and through likes and through uh, people's comments, because that can be, that can really just be very absorbing, um, sometimes in a not very pleasant way. Um, um, and I go back to my notebooks. I go back to the things I love writing, the things that matter to me before they matter to anyone. Um, I write as if no one's looking and no one is reading. And I think that's the, the, the private aspect of writing is very precious. Even if you decide to share your work months or years later or days later, there remains something that is made privately. And I think that's very precious. And the internet might be taking this away from us because of how quickly we share things. Like we write something, oh, I made a Facebook post and it's in everyone's um, hands, it's on the internet. Um, so yeah, um, I wanted to actually, this is my first ever notebook. Um, 2005, I was, um, woo, that's, um, I was around 12, I think, and I want to share poem number one with you when I was 12. Um, I was in school, and that's the first poem I wrote. I had a fight with my sister, and I went to my room, and I was really angry, and I started writing. I uh, started making myself, myself feel better. No matter what you go through, don't ever stop what you do. Forget the pain that is in you. Fight the pain and continue. Wherever your life takes you to, live your life and make your dreams come true. Don't ever fall apart and never frown. Never let anything bring you down. 
Ta-da! And it's really heartwarming to appreciate myself as a 12-year-old who started writing and to say, hey, this, this took you somewhere. This has become my life. Um, I've been traveling, performing, meeting people, make, doing workshops. I am right here talking to you. Thanks to the 12 year old Farah who decided to go like, you know what? I feel like letting this anger out. Um, I'm angry at my sister. I want to make myself feel better. And here you go. Um, and as I said, it doesn't always have to be writing. Um, it can be any medium of expression um, that you decide to use. Um, but then sometimes I get a little sneaky and I'm like, you know what? I want to write something that criticizes uh, fast food, um, so I write something like this, that my friend um, Muhammad Saudi uh, made into a poster. I will deep fry this poem in the depths of this overused oil until it's crunchy. I will add enough salt in it for you not to taste any of its chemically distorted ingredients. I will wrap it with colorful paper and add Disney character toys for it to appeal to your child. And of course, I will give you the tempting option to upsize to quantities that would comprise of enough calories to heat up the North Pole. And I will advertise, I will replicate it, print it on walls, squeeze it into tiny red boxes. I will make sure to market it as a healthy choice by adding some lettuce and beans. Better so, I will pay the fittest of people to do it so that it seems that my poem is a legitimate sponsor of the World Cup. My poem will get all your numbers up. Your heart will beat at rates that no cardiograph could read. My poem will be mass produced on your skin. It will breed. It will breed. It will not weigh on your wallet. It will only permeate your body like cancer cells and keep telling you that you are loving it. So, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, you know what? I want this poem to be public. I want to share it with the world. Ah, and I want it to be a little angry. Um, I want it to be fast. Uh, I may want to add a beat to it uh, and make it into, you know, a poem, in, you know, like rap or, um, you know, rhythm and poetry, as rap is called. Um, so these are just different ways to write and express yourself. Um, but I never wanted to fall in one form of writing, in one medium of writing, um, even though I did fall. I felt like for a couple of years I was pressured to, um, to write a certain thing. And as I said, to write something of importance, something that um, is very critical of a certain phenomenon happening in the world. Um, but sometimes I just want to write about something much simpler. Um, and I will maybe end with this little one, this little piece. Um, how to always be nice. Make sure to stare into walls, lots of them. Look up if you may, look away. Some faces only bring out the ugly in you, so look away. Sadness is more gentle than anger, and the world is no piñata. Sweet things do not come after a good beating. Let your eyes speak for you. You are kinder than all this, and slowly you will learn how to laugh at everything. Turn bad incidents into stories you tell your loved ones, and you laugh. Oh, you will laugh until it's too good to be as ugly. <laughs> and to me, this piece is just a later version of the piece I wrote when I was 12, <laughs> telling myself, no matter what you go through, don't ever stop what you do. Um, it's similar. And it's, it's very nice to always remember that your 11 or 12 or 13 or 14 year old self um, will still be, you'll still find that person in your writing. And writing helps you archive, maybe better than, than your Facebook profiles. I don't know. I'm a bit angry at social media today. Um, I actually deactivated all my accounts because I got very tired. But that's um, that's another story. So yeah, um, this is it. This is my little presentation. Um, I'm very happy I was with you today. <laughs>